What's up, guys? Welcome back to Tops MLB NFTs. And these released just yesterday. You can see these are the retail prices $4.99 for a common pack. It had these percentages. So you're mainly getting commons, 78%. Or you could have picked up the $100 pack if you were lucky. Because these packs did sell out within about five minutes. And the site was very, very laggy as there was you know hundreds of thousands of peoples we don't know exactly they haven't released a press release yet on this stuff uh, but a lot a lot of people were here trying to collect the cards and the booster packs let's talk about the marketplace so that was just a quick introduction to the tops nft what has happened they will probably release series two series three series four etc 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 just like in physical baseball cards i would imagine there's going to be at least one set every year there might be more. I, if I were Tops, the business company myself, I would be releasing several different sets. And I think they do that in the physical card genre currently. They're really several different ones. I know there's like a Tops Chrome set and things like that. So I would be just pumping out these things because they did generate a lot of money. Just from the pack sales alone, I believe it was like $2.5 million yesterday. Uh, and that's pretty much free and clear. You know, it doesn't really cost them anything to generate these NFTs. Small, small uh, upkeep. But this is the marketplace here on Atomic Hub. Definitely needs some work, but it's not terrible. It's not the worst thing. Uh, think of this as an eBay for cards and NFT purchases. So you can uh, look for different types of NFTs that they are featured on this website. So you can see it's a whole bunch of different NFTs. And NFT is just a fancy way to say it's backed by a cryptocurrency. So don't worry about that. But yes. So you can see there's aliens, there's our planet, there's um, other, other, other things. Uh, Funko Pop is actually going to be joining up with Wax as well and be releasing NFTs as well in uh, June, I believe is their target date. So you'll be seeing Funko Pops on here. So this is something that is not going to go away anytime soon. It's only going to get more, more like crazy. More companies are going to jump on the bandwagon of this stuff. So it's good to know about what's going on. Let's take a look at these cards real quick and explain the marketplace. So I'm no near, you know, no way near an expert on this. We've spent about 24 hours now on this marketplace learning and deciphering. So if there's any errors in the video, please post them down in the comment section. But this is what we've learned for the last 24 hours. So cards all have a mint number up here and you can see this is 108. Obviously, the lower the number, the better the value the card will be to a collector. These cards all inherently have no value whatsoever. These are all essentially worthless. But someone actually thinks they are worth money, so they are willing to pay for them. You list them on the marketplace, and you list them in the currency of WAX. Uh, so that's the cryptocurrency that they use. You don't uh, necessarily need to buy or get wax i mean as you sell a card you'll you'll accumulate wax so you see to buy the packs you had to purchase them with actual cash credit card so yeah you don't use the cryptocurrency to buy the packs but for now anytime you're trying to purchase anything on the website here you are going to need this wax so if you want to click on this you can go ahead and buy wax with credit cards and things like that and it shows you exactly how to do that if you have cards just simply sell some cards and then you can use that new wax that you have in your account to go purchase other cards or you can cash out your wax so let's take a look here at the marketplace there's a couple different filters which i think they need a lot more so listings you can list by new you can list by oldest you can list by price highest you can list by price lowest mint highest mint lowest so again the number up in the top right is the mint number on the left here there's a couple of other filters so you can list by rarities so common uncommon rare super rare Epic, Epic Exclusive, Legendary Exclusive, Event Exclusive. Uh, the teams, you can list by several different teams. It's probably every team imaginable in the MLB League. It would be really sad if they left out a couple of teams. So I'm assuming all the teams are listed here. And then subsets. So these are the different rarities of the cards. So you have short prints, you have base 70th, you have super short print, you have team cube. You can click that and you can see it will filter out these things. So you see, you can use these filters together to find the cheapest team cube. And the cheapest team cube is $100 roughly. So these ones are pretty cool. I do like these uh, cube, these animated ones. Another thing that is very important is the sales history right here. So this tells you if people are actually paying, you know, $100 for these things. And it looks like so. 
So this one here sold for $216. Of course, each player card is going to be worth a different amount. This one is worth $129. This one was undervalued here, uh, under that $100 value. doesn't mean it's undervalued, but it was $75. This one, $161. 648 on this one. This one was a very expensive one for some reason. So some people really like these players or expect these players to go up in value. So all this stuff is generally just going to be speculation. Look at these. Okay, wow. $410 on this one. And this one right here is the exact same one, but it's a cheaper, 259 And it also is a lower mint number. So this one was actually a steal, and it probably went to the same person. Buyer, um, buyer, nope. That's interesting. So this guy, he uh, didn't notice or didn't see that he could buy this one or wasn't listed. So this one was sold at 8.32 a.m. and this one was sold at 8.51 a.m. So either this guy didn't see this one or it was not listed yet on the you know wax page here. So he couldn't buy it. But this is a very interesting, very telling right there. I do like how it shows you the time and you can notice that there are quite a bit of sales and this is all just live within you know 24 hours now. So we can take a look at other things. I'm curious about the 1952 Redux cards. So these ones are all signature cards that you get by combining some common cards and burning them together, which means destroying them to create a new pack. In that new pack, it's either going to be four cards or two cards. And so these cards are semi-rare. Like, it, it takes a lot of work. The The cards that you needed to burn to get these packs were roughly about 50 bucks yesterday. I would expect them to have gone down now. Uh, it looks like most of these cards are only worth about $10. We have this guy right here who is very expensive. Louis Robert, 50 bucks almost. Something to look out for, too, is if you can find a card that has a number one in the top right, a mint number one is going to be worth a good chunk of change to the right person. So if you get any card that is number one, definitely do not undervalue that card. Like, shoot for the moon on a number one card. So here's a number four card. And look, look at the price difference here. So number four card. And it sold for $75, and this is a number 80 card that sold for only $21. Within one minute of each other, you can just see the price difference on the lower number right there. You can also list bundles. So this is a guy who listed three cards all together, and he sold them for $75. I currently have not figured out how to search directly for bundles. I do want to try and figure out how to search for bundles because, yeah, you can probably get a lot of good deals by buying them in bundles. So here's another bundle right here. So four cards for 108 bucks. Oh, wow. Look at this price disparity. $756 for a number three Mookie Betts. And then you have a number 145 sold for 75 bucks. Wow. I mean, that just shows you the power of that low number right there. If you can get single digits, single digits are just worth a ton. So the cool thing, too, when you click on the cards, let's go to the number three guy right here. You can take a look at the card, just like a physical baseball card. You got the front and the back and the stats. Uh, but down here, if you scroll down, you can see the price history. So it shows you the median wax. This line right here, I believe, is showing you how many have sold. So this is going to be the volume line. See, 10 sales. This is uh, the price. And up here, it shows you the minimum price. So 250 was the cheapest price he sold for. And then this is the highest at 3,500 wax, which in, ended up being $752. And it gives you a suggested price. So it shows you down the transfer history here, history of the sales. But this is what I really want to look at right here. It shows you 
who owns the top cards. So the number one card is actually still owned in one of the booster packs. So you can still open up a booster pack and pick up the number one Mookie Betts. So this is a really cool thing. This will allow you, if you studied these, these cards and these uh, whereabouts of where they are, you can decipher pretty much, you know, is it a good chance to open a booster pack or should you just sell the booster pack? So the number two card is already owned by this account. The number three card is owned by this account. And the number four card is owned by this account. If we keep going, we can see more. And you can see the number six card is still actually in a booster pack right now. And yeah, so you can get the number one card in a booster pack. And you can also get the number six card in the booster pack. If you wanted any other of these single digit cards, you would then have to make an offer to this person. So it shows this, clicks this up. You're like, okay, I want your number 10 card because I like number 10 for some reason. It's my favorite number. And then you can go ahead and, uh, I believe, write him a message. Oh, no, you just uh, offer up a cards. So unfortunately, you cannot write him a message, but you can go ahead and offer up cards and be like, hey, I want to trade. Why is why is it going over here? <laughs> so you can see a little clunky. And you can send that trade offer over to him. I wish there would be a message where you can click and send him a message and be like, hey, I want to buy your card for a thousand bucks or five hundred bucks or whatever. Uh, that probably will come in the future. You can see this is your collection. This is what we have here on our account. But yeah, I really do like the fact that they show you where these cards are. Definitely getting any of the top 10, it gives you some notoriety, some fame here. You are in the top 10. Anyone can see your card and they can, you know, potentially make offers. And I would assume in the future, send messages to you, be like, hey, I want to pay, you know, this much money for your card. So I think that is really, really cool. Anything under the top 10. So if you get a number, you know, number six, number seven, number five, number 10, I would keep all of those cards. Those cards are probably going to be worth the money in the future. Any other card after number 10 is probably not going to be worth much in my opinion. I just don't feel like those cards will be valuable. There's just going to be too many out there. So if you have any other questions, oh, let's jump on to sales because there's another big thing here. When you want to list something for sale, you click on your, your username here and then you go to inventory and then you click on your card and it says list on market. So we want to list this guy in the market. It'll give you a sales history so you can see where it's sold at. It looks like you can list it for as little as one wax, which I have not seen any cards sold that cheap yet. Uh, this guy here has sold for 1.5 wax, so 33 cents. And now he's hovering up to about three wax. So you type in the amount of wax that you want. You can also change the currency over here. You can click on this and you can do USD. So you'd now be listing it for $1. I think it's just easier to list it in the, the wax token. I mean, everything is kind of comparisons really. But unfortunately, there is commissions. So you do end up losing 10%. You have a collection fee, 6%, a marketplace fee, 2%, a tokenomics fee, 2%. So after we end up selling this card, we're listing it right now for 84 cents. I believe 84 cents, no, three wax, whatever three wax is. And we're gonna end up getting 58 cents from this transaction. If it sells, that is the thing. And you also need RAM. So we're gonna click and it's gonna come up there and tell us transaction failed because we have insufficient RAM. You need 6,100 bytes. We only have 5,495 bytes. RAM is a resource needed to store data on the blockchain. If your transaction fails due to a RAM error, you likely need to buy more RAM bytes from the blockchain. 
you'll get the RAM back if the data is removed from the blockchain. This is this, for example, happens when you cancel listings or if someone buys your listings. Burning NFT does not help to get RAM back unless you are the creator. So you can buy more RAM. This is kind of like a listing maximum. So currently I can list like three or four cards before I run out of RAM. So I don't know what the criteria is if more powerful machines have more RAM, which would make sense. List that down in the comment section, but there's an easy way to get around this. All you have to do is simply make new accounts and each account can list a couple of cards. So we have two accounts currently and they can each list three or four cards. The accounts are free to create and it doesn't cost you anything. All you need is an email address or a Facebook login or something like that. And you can also just transfer the cards. So you click on more and click on transfer and then you can send it to a person. It doesn't cost you anything. So you just have to input the person's uh, wax account number. So for example, if you wanted to send me this card, you would do 3B5BO.wham and that would be it. You can also write the memo right there. So like I said, you can talk to people via this way. I do think that we will have the offer history and be able to chat with them soon. But overall, this is a, um, this is a decent website. I wish there was some more filters that you could sort through and filter things. But overall, I am uh, excited to see what happens with the future of the MLB NFTs and this market here. This is definitely pretty cool. I am uh, I am excited for Funko Pop to join on this trend in June. We'll see what goes there. They said they're going to list those for $9.99 uh, and have a, like a weekly NFT available. The booster packs, like you said, they went from five and a hundred, and now they're currently valued around like thirty bucks for the five dollar one, and about three hundred bucks for the one hundred dollar pack. So the values just skyrocketed on the booster packs. The single cards are definitely tanking, as people are kind of, I think, realizing that they can't sell them, that they're stuck with these cards that they don't really want. So the values of most of these players are going down. And that's just like in general, when you have any kind of card or collectible, you only want a certain couple collectibles. There's only a couple chase cards that you really, really want. And all the other ones are just common trash. So the other ones really hold no value whatsoever because no one really wants to buy them. Whereas if you're talking like Pokemon cards, everyone wants the first edition Charizard because that's the card. So that card is worth, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. There's going to be a similar thing in baseball as well. So what we need to do is we need to do our homework and decipher who are the hot stars of MLB, what cards are in demand, and find those cards. And you could potentially even corner the market here by buying up all the cards and then selling them or attempting to sell them at a higher price. The nice thing is that you know how many cards are actually out there. So for example, uh, this one is number 13 of 2,657. So there's only 2,000 of these guys in the entire existence. Uh, max is question mark. But as of now, there's only this much. And currently, un, you know, opened it up. This is a pre-minted asset. The number means that have been unboxed. So unboxed, currently there's only 1,353 unboxed out of the packs. Uh, of a total supply of 2,657, they're saying. So, like, you know how many there are of each card, generally speaking. All right, guys, if you have any if you have any other questions, post them down below. Love to hear from you guys. Thanks for watching. As always, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel for more content here. We will be back with more cards and maybe unboxings. I haven't decided if we're going to open up some more packs or not, or just kind of sell them and hold on. Uh, I do think my strategy of kind of like buying up some cheap commons might be a good one. We'll uh, we'll do some research on some of the players and see what we can find. And maybe we can flip some cards and make some money, guys. All right, talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching.